Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about passive income. Specifically, two ways to create passive income that I think you guys should consider. If you're new to my channel, my name is Richard Fain and I create multiple streams of income. I also spent 25 years in the banking industry, specifically in commercial banking and commercial real estate financing. So I do have somewhat of a good experience level as it relates to these two passive streams of income I'm going to be telling you guys about tonight. But as always, if you have questions, please drop them in the comment box of this video or you can DM me on Instagram at richardfain28. I also have a company called RF Financial Consulting LLC. And in that company, I offer mentoring and coaching services related around financial freedom. So if you guys are interested in taking it to the next level and having a one-on-one -on -one coach to work with you to help you develop and implement a financial pathway to your financial freedom, you may want to consider giving me an opportunity to do that. Well, let's move on to these two passive streams of income I want to tell you about today in the video. The first one is being a private lender. So let me walk you through what I mean by being a private lender. In my 25 years as a banker, I have had multiple upon multiple customers who would have quite a bit of cash that they necessarily did not want to put into the stock market or they didn't necessarily want to put that cash into hard real estate, but they wanted that cash to work for them and one of the things that they did was become a private lender. And all a private lender is, you can do it on the residential side, you can do it on a commercial side, you can do it for land, but you would basically be the lender for someone who couldn't get traditional bank financing. And how that would work is, if I were looking to get a mortgage and I could not get a conventional mortgage through a normal lender because Either I had bad credit or my employment history wasn't long enough because a lot of times these mortgage companies are going to require at least a full year of documented employment history or they may require two years of documented employment history in order for you to qualify for a traditional mortgage. Whereas with a private lender, they don't necessarily have to hold themselves to those requirements as a private lender. In most cases, a private lender is going to ask for between 30 and 35 percent down payment. But they're not going to worry so much about your credit history or your employment history. They're going to focus mostly on the property. They're going to focus on you paying that 30 to 35 percent down on the property. And then they're going to focus on what is the value of the property, the condition of the property, where is the property located, things of that nature. Because really, their asset that's securing their mortgage is the real estate. So if I were to default on my mortgage to a private lender, then the private lender has recourse against me two ways. They can come after me personally because when I sign that mortgage as an individual, I'm also signing a personal guarantee that I'm going to repay that debt as the borrower. But they're also protected because they'll have a first mortgage on the real estate. And I know in some states they call it a first deed of mortgage, but in Florida they just call it a first mortgage on the real estate. And what that means is if I were to default on my mortgage and I defaulted on some other debt that's out there, my, my lenders, my private lenders mortgage would take first priority over everything else. So no other creditor, no second mortgage holder or third mortgage holder would be able to come in and overstep the first mortgage holder, which would be the private lender. Now, what type of return can you look to get as a private lender. 
Well, I've seen my clients in the past get anywhere from 5% all the way up to 10%. Sometimes you can go all the way up to 12%. It just depends on the circumstances and it also depends on um, the borrower, uh, how bad the borrower wants the loan. But typically rule of thumb is you're gonna be in that six to 8% range. And that's passive income. That's nothing that you have to do other than provide the, 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 the loan in order for that person to buy their property. Now they still own the property, it's in their name. You as the private lender just simply has a mortgage against that property, just like a Bank of America would or a Wells Fargo would or a Citibank would, that you'd have the same type of rights as those big banks as a private lender. If you're gonna think about being a private lender, my recommendation is have a real estate attorney always do your first mortgage. Don't allow the title company or an escrow company have a real estate attorney in your state that's familiar with your real estate laws do your mortgage and have your borrower sign that mortgage now they can sign that mortgage at a title company or anywhere else but make sure a real estate attorney does it you just want to make sure you're extra protected just in case you have to foreclose and take the property back so that's the first way i wanted to talk about to create passive income the second one would be an investor in a privately held company. Just like we invest in publicly traded companies by buying shares of stock of Starbucks, Apple, um, Ford Motor Company. The same way we go buy shares of a publicly traded company, we could also buy shares or be a passive investor in a non-publicly traded company which is called a private company. And how that works is, if I own a company and I want to expand my company, say I own a company and it's in the state of Florida, but I wanna to expand to the state of Georgia, but I don't have enough capital in my company or personally to be able to underwrite and pay for that expansion. Unfortunately, the bank is not really willing to give me money for that expansion because it doesn't necessarily secure their loan with any type of hard assets like real estate. Because most banks, they typically don't want to do expansion deals unless two things are going to be happening. One, you're going to have to have real estate or hard assets or a very, very strong balance sheet to be able to collateralize that loan from the bank. Or two, you're going to have to be a really, sound, proven, profitable business that has a long history and relationship with that particular bank. Those are typically the two things they're gonna look for. Outside of that, it's gonna be difficult to get a loan for expansion that doesn't include real estate or some type of tangible hard asset off of your balance sheet. So a private investor would be an option for you for a person like me if I own the business, but you would be the private investor. So you would negotiate your terms with me as the business owner. So if I need $250,000, we would negotiate terms. Um, I, you, you would be an investor would say, hey, I'll give you the $250,000, but I'll do it for a three year repayment. And I'll give you interest only for the first 12 months and then I want principal and interest for the last 24 months. And then I have a, you have a balloon payment at the end of 36 months. And I want a 7% interest rate in order to lend you that money. So you can also, again, that's passive income. You're a passive investor. You're not gonna be in the day-to-day -day operations. You don't necessarily own any of the stock of the company. You can just be an investor giving them a loan, a private investor giving them a loan. Now you can also become a stockholder in that company if that's the way you want it. You can write your loan agreement in such a way that if they don't pay you back in 36 months, your loan converts to uh, stock of that company. So you can do it that way as well. But that's a way to get you a good seven to 10% return on your money and it be passive. So today, guys, I just wanted to give you a couple additional ways that you can create passive income if you're someone who has some cash and you're not necessarily wanting to put all your eggs in one basket. Maybe you already 
have the type of investment you want in real estate. Maybe you already have the type of investment you want in traditional stock market or mutual funds or ETFs or index funds. Um, maybe you are ready to look at alternative ways to be able to create passive income without actually having to um, purchase an actual hard asset to do it. And being a private lender, and being a private investor are two ways you can do that. Like I said earlier, a private lender, you can be a private lender for pretty much any type of loan. I would concentrate on real estate lending because you have the underlying real estate as your collateral just in case your borrower can't repay you. I would also on the private investor side when you're gonna lend a business money, I would stick with companies that have a proven track record. They have a good management, uh, team in place, they're profitable, um, they have a product or a service that is needed in the market. So do your research on those types of companies. Um, you'll want to look at their financial statements. I would typically look at three years worth of financial statements, whether that be three years worth of corporate tax returns or audited financial statements or some type of financials for three years to try to give you a good understanding of how the, the company has performed. You may even wanna have your CPA help you with evaluating that company. I'm sure that's a service most CPAs do provide to their clients if they wanna be private investors in businesses and privately held businesses. Well, all right guys, I, like I said, I just wanted to give you two more options uh, to create passive income if you're interested in that. I can certainly give you more detail on my experience with both of those passive income sources. Well, all right guys, as I always say, thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness, and I'm gonna catch you guys on the next video. Peace.